Hi, welcome back to another video. There are a few things in this world that are creepier than dolls. <sighs> well, today, we're going to take some creepy dolls and make them even creepier. Let's get started. The dolls I'm using are these porcelain dolls that I found at a thrift store. They only cost me about a dollar or two each. The great thing is, they start out creepy to begin with. I do have this one vinyl doll head also that I'm going to use. But then I even found some creepier dolls. And this one's just scary. The first step is to remove their clothes. And I'm also removing their hair. It's basically like a wig and it's glued on, so you just kind of have to slowly pull it off. Now you have a nice clean surface to paint on. Now I'm going to set these clothes and hair aside. We'll treat those a little bit separately. Uh, one other thing I did was remove their eyelashes. Uh, I don't plan on putting them back on, but you can put them back on if you want. Okay, let's dye the clothes. I just filled a bucket with some water, added some salt, and then I just used some basic black writ dye. Black dye can be really weird because it's usually either very dark green, dark blue, or in this case, it's actually extremely dark purple. Now I'm just going to put the white clothes in just for a few seconds, and then I'll pull them out. I just want them to look old and faded. So rather than be just pure gray, they are they do have a little bit of tint of purple to them. I tried to dye the hair, but that didn't work out, so we're going to end up treating the hair differently later. There are five heads, so I'm going to try painting five different styles. This first one, we're going to go for a cracked eggshell look. I'm going to start by creating the undercoat of the cracking. This is what you'll see between the cracks. As a general rule, you want to layer lots of different colors. I'm using a sponge to apply that here. After letting it dry, we're going to coat it with a with matte medium to seal it. Now we're going to use a special kind of paint called crackle medium. This is very thick, almost like honey, and you paint it on over the top and you let it dry. Once that's dry, now we can just paint regular paint over top of it, and you'll notice, even as I'm painting, that while the white paint dries, it starts to crack, and you get this little eggshell look. So I'm going to cover the whole face with paint. The idea for this one is that only half of the face will have the eggshell crackle. And you can see the, the difference there. Now I'm going to paint on actual cracks. And I'm doing this with a really fine brush and some black and sometimes dark brown paint. I'm just imagining where cracks would go. And even painting a few hollow areas. And then we're going to seal the whole thing in with more matte medium. The next look is kind of gross. It's like fungus growing on it or barnacles. Start by sponging on a base coat of white. And as I paint over the eyes, I can use a wet brush to kind of clear the paint off of the eyes so that we can still see them clearly. Don't forget to paint the arms and the legs, any parts that will be showing once it's dressed. 
Now I'm going to use this stuff called pumice gel. It's, it's a thick paint that has some fine pumice in it. And using a palette knife, I'm just kind of splotching on and pulling up. And it makes these sharp little gross shapes on it. Add some on the other side of the face and then we'll let that dry. It actually dries stiff, kind of like hot glue. Now we'll just paint over it. We want it to blend in a little bit better. So we'll start with some white. Then I'm gonna start adding in some wet green, just kind of into the cracks. It's some kind of fungus growth, so green's a good color. Maybe even some pale blue. Paint on a crack or two. And we'll finish up by adding some wet brown to get down into the deep recesses like a wash. That looks great. The next look we're going for is just kind of very old and rotten like it's sat on a shelf for a long time. Once again, I'm going to start by sponging on a white base coat, clearing the eyes as I go. And now we're going to sponge on a little bit of gray and burnt sienna. Just like always, we want to layer on lots of different colors. The sponge is great because it puts the paint on unevenly. You don't get any brush strokes. It just kind of feels like it organically has just accumulated dirt or rot. Now we want to make those eyes look creepy, so we're going to paint over the entire eye with black paint. And we're going to start by doing kind of a wet wash of paint out from the eyes into the eye socket. And we're going to add some actual tears by using some wet black paint, just putting it in the tear ducts and letting it drip down. We just let it drip where it would naturally want to go. This next style is fairly simple. We're just going to cover the face with white and just kind of paint black around the eyes. Put some black lipstick on. Now this one has really deep set eyes naturally, so I kind of want to see the brown irises. So I'm I'm only adding black to the white parts of the eyes and then painting the deep eye sockets. Like the last one, I'm going to do a dark wash around the eye sockets and kind of blend it out. And then I'm going to cover the whole thing with a wet black wash just to knock down some of the intensity of that white. And I'm just going to paint some tendrils coming out of the eye and a little bit finer detail in between we'll do the same thing to the other eye as well for this last one we're going to put a lot of the things together that we've already done even though this doll face is vinyl and not porcelain, uh, we treat it the same way. The paint sticks just as well. Sponging on lots of different layers of color. Now I'm starting with some brown washes in the eyes and the mouth. And now we're doing the little drip effect like we did with the other one, the tears. This time we'll let it run out of the nose as well. Now we add some cracks. It's a lot easier to paint on, on a much bigger head like this.
Now for this eye, I'm gonna put some of the gel medium without the pumice over the eye just to make it kind of cloudy and gross. For the hair, I'm just taking some black spray paint and lightly spraying over each wig. Just want it to look kind of old and dark and not so bright and clean. This also sticks the hair together a little bit. Now we just dress them all back up in their clothes. For most of the clothes, they only sat in the dye bath for just a few seconds to a couple of minutes. But for the darker clothes, I let them stay in for hours. Uh, now my water wasn't hot, which I think makes it work better, but even on this uh, pink dress, it made it darker and kind of more appropriate for a creepy doll. For the hairs, like I said before, they're just wigs. So I'm going to put a spot of hot glue on the front and place it right on the forehead where I want it to go. And then we'll just add another spot of hot glue on the back to hold it in place. And if I need to, I'll hit it on the sides also with some glue. Now I take the chance here to actually switch the hair on a couple of dolls. So if you have a sharp eye, you'll notice that uh, a couple of the dolls switched hair. And that's because this one in particular, I wanted her to have a different hair than what she came with. And that's it. So let's take a look at the final product. They're so creepy. I love the way that they turned out. One thing I love about painting creepy dolls is that each one is unique and you can come up with a story about each one, what happened to them, why they're so creepy, are they haunted? So if you ever get a hold of some old dolls, take the chance to make some creepy ones. They're gonna look great sitting on my shelf as, as the Halloween season comes around. Hey, if you like these dolls, leave me a comment and let me know which one's your favorite. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. And let's let YouTube know that other people might want to watch this video too by leaving a thumbs up. That's how YouTube works for some reason. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really had fun with it. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, don't be bored, be creative.